It's what we do. Therefore, it's what you do on Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, talking Florida State football, college, nation, all football fans. Welcome. Jump in the live chat. Talk it up. Bring your debate topics, your comments, and your questions for these three and myself. Jason Parker, NBC6 at the top. Big game, James Coleman from fifth quarter college football. And then, of course, Logan Robinson from Knoll at game day. How are you guys doing today? Living the dream. Living life. Happy to be here, guy. Mark, before we continue, I do have to give two quick shout outs. I know we're going back old school, how we used to give shout outs off the top. I got two shout outs to give real quick. So sorry. First shout out goes to the Seminole Boosters. They sent out these lovely flags and license plates holders. Apparently, it's in the Renaissance 2020. Apparently, the road to eight and four is a renaissance for us now. So we have a great gift from the Seminole Boosters. But more importantly, I have to give a shout out to the Comcast store in Water Hill, Florida. It's down here in Broward County. I went to go pay my bill last week, and the gentleman goes, I know you. And I go, I haven't been on TV in a while. I don't know how you know me. He goes, he goes, you do that YouTube show every single Tuesday talking about FSU. He goes, he goes, you do it with James, you do it with Logan, and you do it with the host. What's his name? Oh, yeah, Dave Rogers. <laughs> but then he quickly corrected himself that you're Mark Rogers, and he did. I didn't have to correct oh, He him. corrected himself. Very, he very quickly good. corrected himself. So, so shout out to the gentleman at the, at the Comcast store in Water Hill, Florida. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. I'm going to definitely say similar boosters. I'm, ups, I'm a little upset right now because not only did I up my booster membership, I bought two more tickets and I don't have anything to show for it. Maybe you not a ticket or anything else. Like maybe I'm not a, maybe I need to be like those guys who brag on Twitter. Like and say I'm like right. a platinum booster or something like I, I, maybe that's what I need to do. I'm going to tell them that if they don't change the name of the stadium, I'm going to withdraw my booster membership. First of all, I'm, <laughs> first of all, let's be honest there. Number two, have they you won't care. Have you checked your mail for it? I just checked my mail today. There was nothing in it. And I'm upset because my new Jordans aren't here either. So like it's a combination of a lot of things that are pissing me off right now. My Concord breads, bread 11 should be here by now. U.S. Postal Service in Jacksonville, please get James is Jordan's and his FSU flag. Please, can you get him his stuff? Mine got yeah, up. How is Dean not higher on that list than than you, Jason? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That he, he's he's a lot closer to Tallahassee. He's a, he's 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 a former FSU athlete. James should get this stuff before me all the way down here in South Florida. Do they, do, James, do they still give you gear and stuff? Yeah, when like, I go back, um, yeah. like I got some those shorts last year. Were clutched. Um, I yeah. got the shorts. My son stole the bag, which I would never wear. I got a polo, the like the polo shirt that doesn't have the collar, but like has the little two button thing. I was kind of snazzy. I like those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's nice stuff. But, Get in, in an XL. You're talking about out. like what I've got on tonight. Um, no, but you got a button though. You got two here. No, we got. It's one. like a. Got it's like a. It's like their new golf. It's like the new Nike golf. Okay. Kind of yeah. pillowy kind of deal. I don't know. It's weird, but it's a it's a it's a clean look. It's more of a modern kind of look for like game days. If you're wearing it on game days, you'll feel pretty nice wearing it. James has not only upped his uh, booster status, but right. also his uh, camera game. Yes, you you have the clearest looking shot of the four of us now. You have you. My, bro- just- my brother-in-law is really a whiz with this stuff, and he told me he's been telling me for weeks the phone. Gives you the, the iPhone camera gives you way better camera than my um, ten year old laptop. So out of laziness and not feeling like going to my car to get my laptop, and because Streamyard is now letting me do more things from that phone, I was like this. And he sets up the lighting and all of this other cool stuff. So um, a, I can't say it's me, but James the only thing Crystal I did is that's my helmet. That's my helmet in the background, yep. and I can't say that is my jersey. But outside of that. It's all him. <laughs> we appreciate the assist. That's awesome. Mark, that Mark, is awesome. Yeah. I have a quick question for you. Last week you me. you teased that, that that there was a question about my my consecutive week streak. And I'd like to address mm. this right away. What is this controversy that you're trying to start here? 
Yeah, so Jason is Mr. 58 of 59 is actually nope. where he where he is. And unfortunately, I believe the end of the streak came at show 55. So you didn't even break DiMaggio's streak. That's not, that's not true. Um, this entire yeah, we had a Florida State Seminoles live, I believe it was number 55, well, with Logan and myself. Logan was, it was here. Just him. It was just we him think, and Logan. That was a we big, we big Mike Norvell controversy. You weren't right. here. Yeah. <laughs> it's an official. It was on the banner. Listen, official Florida State Seminoles live show. Listen, I, I get the people on your side of the political spectrum. You like to stretch the truth and whatnot. The fact of the matter is you got Logan while <laughs> we were working. James and I were doing our jobs. Logan was home with Matty Ice. He had the time to go on and talk for an hour. You did not reach out because you know that I would have dropped my work in a heartbeat. So <laughs> you know, on this. That does not count. I am 59 for 59. We're, no, Mark, you're wrong. I'm sorry. Well, you would be 58 of 58, actually, if you oh, count it. I'm going to build a, some kind of graphic next to you, Jason, that's going to have check marks. Your first shout out came at like 35 seconds into the show. And, and now you're you're bringing up politics like five minutes into the show. Did I say <laughs> politics? I said, I said I'll, I'll that's your, another guarantee. That's all I said. All I said is that and, I'm perfect, and you are just trying to stretch the truth. That's all. Even James understands. James knows what I'm talking about. It's an official oh. Florida State Seminoles live. It was a live. Stream. We even went 90 minutes. We went an hour and a half on that baby. Just call me Kurt Henning because I'm Mr. Perfect. I was just going to say, Mark, we actually have new, some new competition now on Tuesday night. It seems like another outlet is now doing FSU shows on Tuesday nights. So we now at the same exact time at 7 o'clock, they just started. So we now have some competition. We already have more viewers in them, but I'm just saying we have just a little bit of uh -oh. comp there. And it makes it for more motivation to kill it for the next hour and do our thing. And we need to share it more. They were right. jealous. They're envious of us. So that's why we have to play the thing. So, but what you have to do though is the only way we can do this, and I, I hate to steal anybody's thunder, but you've got to go push the like button and you've got mm -hmm. to subscribe to Mark Rogers TV for every Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. to make sure you get the best Seminoles talk. But as I learned from one of my favorites on biographics, it's not enough to subscribe and like um, Mark Rogers TV. You have to be, you have to go and you have to check, you have to push the um, little the, um, the ring button. So that you can get alerted every time our Seminoles thing comes on, so that you can be in the know. Is that? I'm sorry, Logan. Is that close? Is that, 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 that close that's perfect, to James. <laughs> that, that is correct. <laughs> James, James took. All right, I'll let James do the early ones. Yeah. I'll take the 745s. James is going to do a 710 one now, and I'll stick with my 745. Like you know, James <laughs> kicked your ass on that one, right? You understand that, <laughs> <laughs> that correct? Well, it was a different flair, a little, a little different flavor to that one. James just gives it a little different flavor. That's good. Uh, ironically, while we're pushing for the likes and the subscribers, we sit here at 19,997 on the subscribers. Three away Whoa. from 20K. We're hitting 20,000. Hit the subscribe button right now. Three people, 20,000 likes on my 58th straight show. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Not likes, Jason. Let's get it right. That would be subscribers. On my 58th. Subscribers. The more important thing in that sense was my 58th straight show. Okay? Is it think, live uh, on Facebook? Uh, no, we will discuss that later. Okay. So, so uh, people, I'm sure, want uh, some Jalen White conversation here. Running back out of... Uh, I got Daleville, Alabama, Jason. Is that it, what you told me? The Dothan area. He's from Do the, okay, the Dothan area. area. I know where that is down there on the coast, right? Yeah, he's a he's a four star running back from Alabama. He had previously had Florida State in his top three, so it was kind of known that Florida State was going to obviously be in his top ten. Uh, he has not revealed what his updated list is, whatnot. But there's a lot of people who think that Florida State is a favorite to land him, and I think this is a good. Uh, first step, I'd love for Florida State to start recruiting more people in the state of Florida, but at this point, let's get who we can get. And I think it's a good thing that, that Florida State is starting to go away from the secondary, go away from the offensive line, and getting more skill positions. Because as we saw, Cam Maker's gone, Caleb LeBourne is going to be gone coming up soon, Anthony Grant goes to the Juco level, running back is an area, they need to start addressing concerns there. So I think it would be good if Florida State can get Jalen White to come in from the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. 5'10", 185, 2021 class. Uh, per 247 Sports, he's ranked as the seventh best running back. Um, 
uh, compositely, he's um, number 10, uh, but he, he's got some talent. Like like uh, Jason said, there might be some favoritism for Florida State to land him um, to keep building that running back room. But like I said, it, it's, it's a, well, I'll bring up it's a top 10 um, nowadays, and they'll drop to a top eight, a top six, a top four, top three, and then we'll know. But um, a talented guy from uh, Dothan, Alabama. Florida State's had some good cats come out of Alabama. Bessemer, Alabama, I don't know who came from there, but I think he won a Heisman Trophy. But um, it's part of my family lives in Dothan, too. So, you know what? Oh, God. Come on over to Tallahassee. What's wrong? Because there's always that bias. Oh, my family's from Alabama. He's got to be great right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say drop the bag. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we're going to give him a bet. Nah, we need that. Um, four, uh, again, a four-star guy. It's cool. One thing, I mean, that Coach Norvell does a really good job of, Finding these gems like a, like an Altmaier or guys that you find and they're three stars and, and people aren't recruiting them. And then all of a sudden people go back and watch them and it's dope. But being at Florida State, at some point, the logo has to mean something. The brand has to mean something to be able to attract the top talent. Now it's can you go in there with the big dogs and can you come out with can you come out with a victory in a recruiting battle? Um, that's really what we have to see. And obviously playing games will help with that. But um, we definitely need some more talent um, to bolster that running back. Room. James, we've talked about it a little bit in the past. Is it for, for me, I'll admit it, I'm frustrated that Florida State has seemed to start recruiting like, you know, Texas, Alabama, Georgia. And first of all, get whatever guys you can get, get whatever great guys who want to come into the brand. That being said, is there a little bit of disappointment at this point that Florida State is not more active in recruiting in the state of Florida, not just South Florida, but also Central Florida, North Florida. Is that a little frustrating for you as a former athlete to see Florida State leaving the Sunshine State, or what are your thoughts on that? I mean, yes. Um, I think when there's um, equal talent in a position, um, let's say there's two three-stars. There's a three-star from L.A. and there's a three-star from Florida. I would always err to – the three star in your um in your in your home state if um if that's if the talent is equal but there's a there's like an offensive lineman on a Samoan I think I believe in the Pensacola area that we have interest in but we haven't talked to um there's a ton of other teams but the real reason why I get frustrated more so um locally I say from the state and even regionally when you really go up into the Badosta area. Um, I believe there's a young man named Tim Davis who we're just now getting on. Who, if we would have, his dad is in a Seminole group. Mm -hmm. Like, we had we jumped on him with the relationship, we wouldn't have to battle Miami for this young man. Um, he's a tight end linebacker prospect. But you're not using the um, the strength of the brand that's in that's, that's in the state. Like at almost every major powerhouse, or at least at, in every major area in Tallahassee. I mean, excuse me, in Florida where talent is you not only have i wouldn't say boosters you're not, but you have very notable players mm -hmm. who are there who would do nothing more who would love nothing more than to help the program um get some guys um, and, and speak highly of the program so i think that's something that we have to do and strengthen the networks i was talking with a coach about a certain player um that might transfer that might want to transfer um and we were talking about how we've got to strengthen the um the player network and i think that's one of the things Logan, obviously you're more with no game and whatnot. What else are you hearing on the recruiting front? I've heard there's a couple guys, I believe, from uh, Polk County area. I believe there's one guy from Lakeland, one guy from Fort Meade that they're looking at. Are you hearing about Florida State advancing with any guys in the recruiting game right now? Well, one thing I think we s didn't get to cover it because I believe it happened last Wednesday or Thursday. Kobe Gross, Gross – committed to force. I don't think we got to cover him really. We never got to bring him up, but this kind of goes back to what James was talking about of finding gems and kind of F FSU fans wondering, you know, who is this cat? You look at his 247 um, profile. There's no stars. There. There's not really a lot of evaluation. He didn't play last year. There's a lot of question marks about that, but he was offered uh, and he went through about three days of <clears throat> Zoom calls with the coaching staff, and he finally got to talk to Mike Norvell on the last night. Um, and uh, Mike Norvell seems really excited about this cat. Um, uh, Kobe's been kind of very um, – we've talked about his relationship with Norvell and what they were talking about, and um, it was pretty cool to see Mike Norvell's energy, and he sees something in this, in this player. Um, he obviously comes from a Juco and from the West Coast. 
Uh, so he's coming all the way to Florida State. Um, he's going to try to help that tight end room. Uh, and I don't know the, the staff see something you've, you've, and you got to kind of, tr- you got to trust the staff. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen them play here in Tallahassee <clears throat> as a whole, as a whole squad, the coaching staff wise. Uh, but if you look back at the NFL draft and what uh, those coaches did that are currently in Tallahassee, uh, they did a successful job and better than Florida state. That's for sure. Um, and so you got to kind of trust it. And like James was saying, sometimes this staff is able to find gems and this might be one. He's kind of like an athletic, he's, he's a, he's a decent blocker. There's just not a lot of film on him, but we're interviewing him tonight. I have a lot of questions about his recruitment because he kind of wanted to commit really quickly, uh, cause he was just off for not a long time ago at all. Uh, so I kind of want to get his interest and he's coming all the way from over there to, uh, Florida. So, um, Kobe Gross is, is a null. I don't. We just never got to really bring it up. Um, another tight end for FSU. Maybe to ho- mainly hope with help with blocking. Maybe. Yeah. Please let me know. There, there's. I, I'm. Yeah. I. I. I need some. I just need the right film. Because I. I want to believe. Um. But you know. It, first off, let me stop. Congratulations. Because at the end of the day, nobody knew who the hell I was either. So I don't really care about that part. If he comes, I want to be able to um um I want him to be able to be be successful. It's just when I think of like that fir- that uh, that big of an offer, I got I got to see more than some seven on seven film. I saw my man um my man um Jeremiah was trying to give me some impact plays, and I asked for some film, and I'm like, yeah, that's film. You gave me you gave me film. It's not what I was quite asking for, but you gave me some film. James, James, just for the record, I knew who you were. All right. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, uh, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I don't care about stars. I want to know if you can play or not. But, you know, I just like, – it's a certain thing I'm looking for. I, I consider tight end skill players. And there's a certain thing that I'm looking for when I look at skill players. And if I don't see it, then, you know, I, I need somebody to help guide me in the – um in the in the right way so but it but it's a commit and it's going in the right direction it, it, it's better than not getting the commit i can tell you that much yeah top 10 running back uh james so clemson kid uh at least the first one we talked about the top 10 running back Jalen white anyway uh clemson kid wants to know uh james how much you're pumping iron these days um i i do it when i when, when some kids question if i still if I still can hunt. So like, um, you know, I can, um, I, I can still push up pretty decent on the bench press. I think I got like, I think I had like 475. It's about a hundred off of what I was doing when I was maxing. Whoa, 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 and whoa. I can still 475. You're still at 475. Yeah. yeah like when Good I did Lord. it, that was, about, that was about three, four months ago. Um, I'm not as strong as that. I don't like the, that's I'm be honest with you. Once you get over 400 pounds, it's really, it, it doesn't make, I, I don't, I only did that to have, a, we were having a measuring contest yep. me and the guy were going after it. Um, I typically just rep, I won't go over 315 on stuff. So, cause I like to be explosive. That's really the most important thing, especially when I was in the gym training guys is about being explosive through movements. And when I'm putting on a hand clean clinic, um, I still can get 405. Um, I maxed out at about 435. But it's really about the speed of the bar. And even when I go, when I was, when I attempted to do 425, um, people were like, you can get it. And I'm like, uh, yeah, it looks like I can get it, but I know my body. I know I can't get up under it because I don't believe in that real deep squat thing. That's just not my thing. Um, I believe you got to be able to get the weight like an athlete. And I would never be in that position to block somebody. So everything I do is from out of the athlete position. So. Um, and then squats, I mean, I'm sure I could squat a house, but I'm trying to, I'm running more. That's my thing now. I'm run, I'm, I'm actually been putting in about, I get it on average about three and a half miles a day. So that's me. I got some cool shoes. If you're looking for some running shoes and you're a big fella, Hoka or Hoka one, I'm telling you the, the cushion in it. Like once I put them bad boys on, I got some speed. I got, I got some speed on that mile. Was, what are these things called? I like to put in about four miles myself uh, several times. Yeah, um, it's H O K A one. I think I'm, I think I'm spelling okay. it right. And um, yeah, it's some it's some real. It's, it was it's it my, like because my feet were hurting. I was wearing my older Adidas, 
Yep. And somebody told me to wear those, and I put them on them. I, I don't get nothing from them, yeah. so that's how you know it's good. Because I get paid, to, I get paid to bring people business, but James, those are just that good. James is just trying to cop a free pair real quick, so don't let him do his his, his <laughs> sponsorship his, that he's got on the fire. I mean, who hey, I'm not paying him. So like or something in Tallahassee, or you know Popeyes or any other place, who would do something that trivial? Good God, nah, that's funny, man. <laughs> I've joined the yoga crowd here. It's not real pretty, but, uh, you know, here in the last six months or so. Does anyone else feel like less of a man knowing that they can't bench 475? Or is that just... 475. One of the it's proudest overrated. days of my life is when I lifted 300. Overrated experience, I'll be honest with you. Like, I, 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 I want to be I want to be skinny. I want to know what it feels like. I don't want to be a big guy anymore. It's, oh. it's um, But I can't get too skinny because I still have a big head. So that's the only... I can't ever... I won't ever look like <laughs> Logan. Unless, what I, unless I look sick. What are you benching down there, Logan? I today I was doing uh leg rep bench wise. I did hit two fifty in high school. I think my max was two thirty, so I'm I'm getting there. I want to hit three fifteen though, because my dad hit three fifteen and I'm I come with the baseball physique family genetically wise. My dad played baseball, uncle, everybody. So when I went to football, it was a whole different world. I had to eat. Yep. I'm still eating a ton. Um, but I want to hit three fifteen before and then call it quits but i want to keep gaining weight though i was at 175 now i was at 175 about four months ago so i just hit 200 earlier this week but i want to go to 215 and because I, I i don't like being out in bars i don't like walking around like that and you know i don't want to be flicked away i want to at least be pushed away you know i don't want to be a baby i don't like being in bars i just want to point that out that that uh 724 logan just said the words i don't like being out in bars but you didn't take my whole sentence, though. So I think Jason's asking everybody's uh, max on the bench to, to gauge the push-up challenge. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Let's head it our way at some I point. Mean, it's it's going to be sad when all my predictions come true and Logan has to do 200 push-ups. I feel bad for him. And mm -hmm. Logan just gets I will not be hitting – that. that's my James Blackman. I said James Blackman will be the starting quarterback in Atlanta – Whoa. And yeah, that was my are bet. You, are you right. dropping it right now, though? Are you giving us your three predictions right now? Is this happening? My, my bold predictions. I thought. Is there any more still left on the storyline? Any top no, stories going let's on? Do this. Give us Logan's yeah. three bold hot take predictions. Yeah, Jason gave us like eight. It was supposed to be three. Four. It turned out to be eight. I gave you 18. four. I gave you three, and you turned it into four. Your creative math made it four. Just like you can't count to 58 and give him a fake show. Oh, <laughs> Logan, what are your three fearless hot take predictions? My three hot takes. And like I said, I'm going to keep it to FSU football. Um, last year, and I feel like it's been the whole time he's been here, Hamza Najaldeen has led the team in tackles on defense, obviously. Um, I'm going to switch it up. This is obviously a bold take. I still think Hamza Nazaldine, if he comes back fully, is going to be a beast. But I'm going to predict Emmett Rice to be um, the lead tackler after the season is over. I think it's also bold because Emmett Rice has had some trouble staying healthy throughout the season. Um, he's packed on his some pounds. He's at 228. He came into FSU at 195 pounds. He came in as a friggin' DB. He looked like it too when we were at practices watching him. So he's – Put on weight. I think he's kind of got. He's going to take a leadership role too. Um, and if he brings out the number one jersey too, then you know that adds on another twenty tackles. So um, I think Emmett Rice is going to be lead. What was you got something to say, Jason? Wait, he's switching in jersey numbers. Is he switching? Oh no, yeah, he's thinking about it. Thinking about it. He's going full Sam Coward. Uh, it seems to be that way. I kind of like. I don't know, 56 on him. He when he looks so small, it didn't look good. But maybe now that he's a little bit bigger, you know, you you put video on Twitter of him the other day showing him down here when he went to high school at Miami Norland. I remember watching the kid can play, and when we've said this before, we've said this about a lot of guys with Florida State of late. When he plays his best, he's unstoppable. The question is going to be, can he stay healthy enough, and can he stay focused? That's going to be my concern with him at linebacker. I think he could. Be the leading tackler, but I think he needs to be focused on being our solid linebacker. Mm -hmm. And I think me and James really like – I like Brendan Gant too, and I like Emmett Rice. I think those are your two most physical, just nasty guys. Truly really don't give a damn what you're doing. They're just going to pop you or just grab your head like 
Emmett Rice did last season and just tear you apart. But I, I think also the Chris Marr effect is going to play a, a big role in some of these guys. Um, and number then number two, what is it? Number two. Number two, uh, Jordan Young has more production than uh, Warren Thompson. I keep on hearing so much stuff about Warren Thompson, Warren Thompson, Warren Thompson. We don't get to hear a lot about Jordan Young. Jordan Young was highly recruited really at the end of his uh, time in high school to go to Tennessee. Um, and Florida State was still somehow able to save him and, and come to FSU. Uh, we hear a lot of good things kind of from the inside there, some scoop there, but we haven't got to see him play a lot. Uh, not Mike Norvell got to go see him play um, in the bowl game. Uh, he had some pretty impressive catches too. Uh, on the sideline, I think two back-to-back -back plays there going to him. Uh, and I think <clears throat> I think he, he's a guy that really is going to push into giving a lot of competition to like guys like DJ Matthews. Uh, I think Helton's your number two no matter what. But the, you've got to find a number three, and it's going to be interesting to see. But I think Jordan Young's going to be that cat. He's, got a lot, he's had a lot of patience, um, very talented. I forget what his nickname is. Someone will probably put it in the chat. Um, abusement but, park yeah abusement park yeah so he, he he's got got talent and i think he's gonna he's not gonna he's gonna beat out or whatever production wise of warren thompson because i don't i don't know you know the warren thompson thing i i he's a he's great physically he looks good um but i think mentally i think mike norvell will like it will like young a little bit more i don't know if anybody who's gonna be like the number three receiver to you guys or even your number two. James, I don't feel like either one of those are hot takes so far. I mean, those are like normal. Emmett Rice leading tacklers, Jordan Young number three. Receiver. Oh, Hamza Nadral Dean is still there. I mean, that's like a that's a, I think, that's um, a first round, second round talent. I think he caught that. I think the Jordan Young. I think the Jordan Young one was pretty. Um, that he'll be one of your top four wide receivers is pretty is pretty interesting. I I agree with you. I like Jordan Young, um, a lot. Um, there's arguments over. Who who found Jordan Young? Um, you know, I would go with the guy whose um, college teammate presented him the um, the highlight film before anybody offered him, and he talked about it. That's what I would say. But you know, it, bottom line <laughs> is the kid got found. So like, who mm -hmm. semantics? But I like this film and didn't understand. I mean, I don't. That's just why I don't like the recruiting process now. It's a little bit too quick because here's a guy who was a state champion hurler. And every week he was just dominating people his senior year in high school and up, up in the Atlanta metro area, which is which plays a good brand of football. Um, the guy that I really see, I guess the five wide receivers that I do expect to get some production because if it operates the way that it should, you're going to need five. Obviously, Tamara and Terry, who I need to see step it up, um, play big boy football. I've been watching some good stuff, and people have shown a lot of the film of, of him against C.J. Henderson and things of that nature, but I also saw him get big boyed against Virginia on a curl where he should have caught it, and it should have been a first down instead of it was an interception. So that doesn't help um, your, your quarterback that's already struggling. Helton, I agree with you. I also believe that DJ is still going to be here because as much as people talk about DJ, we got to go back and remember, DJ made some clutch catches across the middle for a guy that's tiny. He, he goes up. So. Oh, hey. I I will say that I do agree. There he is. Sorry. Jesus. Can you, you hear me? for a second, James? Am I still here? Yeah, well, well you're, you're good. good. Okay, yeah, for whatever. Yeah, all right. So, but for a guy, DJ goes up and gets it. Um, I believe Jordan Young, and I think Warren might be it, but don't be surprised if Brian Robinson doesn't be the freshman that comes in and impacts. Just the yeah. way his body is transformed with little to no coaching, Man, if that kid comes in and he he kind of digs into what Dugan says, I believe he's going to be remarkable, man. Brian Robinson was the truth down in Palm Beach County, and he was doing big things. The thing I, I will agree with what Logan said to an extent: Warren Thompson has been disappointing. He's been very disappointing his time in Tallahassee, and I, I I don't know where it comes from because he was very good in high school, yeah, up in Scepter Armwood, a very you know, very powerhouse program up in the Tampa area. I don't know why he hasn't been able to get it done on the field in Tallahassee. I mean, I, 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 he's been disappointed so far. This is his make or break year. If he doesn't do it this year, I think he heads back to a USF or something after 2020. I can see it. Yeah, 
Okay. He'll be at FAU. He'll be, he'll be, uh, he'll be an hour. Oh, man. There's the first thing for free right there. <laughs> that would be scary. All right. All right. So, what is your third hot take? Brand good. Uh, Brand good one, Logan. A good one. I'm. I, I've, <clears throat> I, I'm. I'm contemplated and. Logan's shooting from the hip here. You were prepared yeah. for like 18 weeks. Well, you know, when you're Mr. Perfect, you have to prepare in advance for the people. I've, had, I've been thinking about mine for two weeks, but I'm I'm kind of, I don't know if this is even a, like a really a hot, hot take. I don't know if we're just doing regular bold takes or not. Um, but can I say that, uh, which I actually think is going to happen. I actually think it's going to happen. I think there's too much hype going. To, never mind. I'm not going to say because I will go all over social media. Uh, Corey Durden is going to have a better year than Marvin Wilson this upcoming season. Whoa. That's a bold one. That is an extremely, extremely hot, bold one right there just to lay it down. Stats wise, stats wise, I still think obviously Marvin Wilson, he's going to be our first rounder. He's extremely, extremely talented. But man, offensive linemen are going to be all over Marvin. I mean, that's how it was since he. About five games into the end of his uh, career at FSU, they were already had his eyes on him. Corey Durden, if you go back and look at the stats last year, he was, you know, almost neck and neck with Marvin in different <clears throat> stat sheets. And I, I think this upcoming season, everybody's focused on Marvin Wilson, obviously going to be projected, and it's going to be tweeted out that he's a top 15, top 20 pick. Um, I think Corey Durden's going to kind of slide in there and, and uh, be trouble. So that's kind of like the hot, hot, hottest take that's, right there. That's like all you, held back, you held back on the hottest, Logan. See, by the way, Logan, we want you to say things that are going to go viral on social media because then they come <laughs> back and they watch this. But I like that, Logan. See, that's a hot take. That's perfect. That's what you got to do. That's like a Tennessee winning I, East hot take. Like, who would say that? You keep that up, Logan, you'll get a shout-out from Jason. He will. <laughs> shout-out to Logan in the little game back. If Hamza Nasraldine is complete, if he comes back and he's healthy as all get out, I think it's still a bold statement from Emmett for Emmett Rice. I mean, obviously he's going to uh, be a starting linebacker, but um, Hamza Nasraldine is coming back from a from an injury. Um, well, I don't know. Well, an SEC dog needs to see it, so he wants it a little bit closer. We got a little rivalry between these two. Here it goes. Well, at least I can spell words correctly, so I guess that's not really a rivalry. <laughs> He wants to see it a little bit closer. You know, this is what you get when you win national titles, at least this century. Just letting you know you get spears. Jason, we also have Scott Davis uh, wanting the uh, weekly Jimbo versus Willie debate. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> we're, not going, we're not going there. I'm just mentioning that uh, it was brought up. It's fine. We I lost mean, James. I've said there he is. He's coming I've back. Said it before, and then I will say it again. I understand why Willie Taggart got fired. He didn't live up to his job through 21 games. The fact of the matter is we all know why he only got 21 games. I really to- meant it, Jason, when I said we don't need to talk about that. It was just mentioned in the We're last We're going chat. to. I think just James wanted to- just wanted to be on the other side of the screen. Wait till the overtime. The side I couldn't hear y'all, so I had to reset it. I didn't know what was going on. They're, yeah, they're, trying, to, they're trying to start the whole Jimbo versus Willie thing. They're just trying to fire me up here. Wait till the overtime portion of tonight's show. So we've got 61 in the live chat uh, right now. So leave your comments, your questions. I'll pick them up right here on the live chat. Also, of course, as James has let us know, like the video and, of course, subscribe. That way you turn on the bell for the notifications. You know when we're going live. Um, So Packer and Durham. Yes, Jason. You know what, Mark? Before we do that, though, because he gave such three good hot takes, I feel like we should give Logan a chance to sell the like button. Well, of course we're going to. That's his thing. You so know, Jason, I think we should. Yeah, Jason, James just gave us a uh, a bonus play. Right, so I think it's time for everybody right? warmed up. We're is it time? Hour. What time is it? We're in the yeah, second. Thirty-seven hour. minutes into it. Logan. It's an early. It's an early pool. It's an early pool. We're we're already taking shots um, right now, but we're, we're going to take an early pool and just go ahead and hit that like button. I don't know. I had to, had it up right here on my other monitor, but. I think we've got to have to have at least 50 people. And if we don't have 50, we have 65 people watching. We actually have 40 likes. So that is actually a good start. I think it's because James started off. That might be something we need to do a lot more often is kind of sell off the like button. But if you hit that like button, we can get it to 50. 
uh, before 745, even 740, that would be incredible. We have 40 likes right now, 65 people watching. We do this every Tuesday evening. Um, and definitely when football starts, there's a lot more people watching. Uh, also, if you haven't subscribed yet to Mark Rogers, make sure you subscribe. Are we at 20,000 yet, Mark? Can we celebrate? Oh, can I go? Can I go grab a beer and shotgun it? You're going to anyway, so we we celebrated. You guys, I believe we were all on when I hit ten thousand last year. It was a little bit. I, uh, I might. It was sometime in May. We hit uh, ten thousand. Uh, Let me refresh. Evening. And um, we'll we'll hit we'll do it big again. I I got a cake. I had balloons for ten thousand, but we'll twenty thousand. Uh, we'll go for twenty five thousand. Can I just ask SEC Doc a question? Can you just type in there? Were you alive the last time Georgia won a national title? Just wonder. <laughs> it was forty years ago. I just wanted to make sure to see if you were actually mm -hmm. alive last time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I think we hit twenty, or I think you hit twenty thousand. I just refreshed. You, you can take you can take some credit for that too. It was, it was me. me. Was it David we I made fifth quarter, fifth quarter just like you. I didn't realize fifth quarter was a fifth subscriber. Quarter. Nice. I'm going to grab a beer. Going That's time. it. I'm going to grab a beer. Logan just an excuse to go get a beer real quick. So we're going to take a moment okay. here. This, this is, uh, I believe, what, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. You're at 20. It says 20. Nice. Make sure just in case somebody drops you off. Mazel tov, Mark. Mazel tov. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we're going to get your, uh, your question to the screen here. Last time, I can't wait to see this. Uh, this can't be good. Uh, we need to get were, sponsored. Were you alive the last time Georgia won national championship? Mark, you were the only one out of this group who was alive the last time Georgia. Won. Old. All right. I was actually. I actually watched. Remember watching the game? They beat Notre Dame in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. yeah. So not was I wasn't like crawling around. Yeah, I was up and running, riding my bike, going to school, the whole deal. Yeah, yeah James I got I, a lot of years on all of you, unfortunately. I'm not that much older, but James and I were born a few years later. Logan was born decades later. He's throwing cats all over the room now. <laughs> we're show, here to celebrate. The cat's excited. 20K is huge. You just want okay. to I appreciate it. You guys, uh, you guys are amazing. We've done it now for 59 shows. Jason's been a part of 58 of those. And uh, Logan's around the 55 range. Uh, we're putting James around. What do we think here? 42? 42 is good. 45. We'll give him maybe a little high I'll on 42. I'll take that. That might be a little high. <laughs> a little high. <laughs> well, you know, when you get invited. He to does get the OG mark, though. He was I think first. I'm at 56. Yep. You know, you can only be on the shows that you're actually invited to be on, James. Just remember that. So, you know, <laughs> when you're invited to 58 shows and you're on 58, you're, you're perfect. Logan's cat. Uh, what's, your, what's your cat's name, Logan? Uh, uh, Gilly. It's a character's name from Game of Thrones. It's really okay. nerdy and sad, but it is what it is. 13 episodes for... Uh, yeah, Gilly. Yeah. Gilly. Oh, she's excited. 13. She's excited. I left the door open, so she's going to run around and have a good time. So, folks, uh, Packer in Durham is an ACC network show that airs on ESPN or on the ACC network, uh, hosted by ESPN every morning. They named, as is the deal that you do here, uh, this time of year, this time of a decade, as we end a decade, uh, having completed 2010 through 19, people are uh, mentioning they're all decade teams. So this is uh, courtesy Mark Packer. I'll give you a group of players. So I'll go like skill position offense. Let's mm -hmm. let's go there. You guys tell me your thoughts, where they may have missed it, so forth. Deshaun Watson, a quarterback, Clemson. A.J. Dillon, B.C. running back. Dalvin Cook, Florida State running back. At wide receiver, we've got Clemson, Sammy Watkins. We've got Jamison Crowder from Duke and Tyler Boyd from Pitt. And a tight end, Eric Ebron from North Carolina. Now, was that Packer or Durham's list? Because I noticed they had different. Uh, Mark Packer's list. Yeah. That's the only one I could find. And then Durham, I believe I'm looking right now, Durham had Jameis as his starting quarterback. He had Dalvin at running back, uh, Travis Etienne at running back, uh, Rashad Green at wide receiver, Sammy Watkins at wide receiver. And he had no FSU offensive lineman, uh, West Durham did, but Mark Pack, I believe, had two. He had both Trey Jackson. Okay. We're, we're going with the skill position players first. Yeah. Well, we'll group them. I just, what, I, what are your I, thoughts, Jason? I, 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 Desha Deshaun Watson was a great quarterback at Clemson. He was a great quarterback on that 2016 team. I just feel like, and, and this may be just biased, if you're going to go with the best quarterback in the ACC that decade, it was James. That 2013 season 
was a magical season under center. Over 4,000 yards passing. I, believe, oh, I forgot his, his final touchdown interception numbers, but it was it was astonishing. You know, we can argue that that team was arguably the greatest college football team ever. You can't say that about the 2016 Clemson team because they had a loss. I just, I, I, I'm going to be biased towards Jameis. I think Jameis was the best quarterback in the ACC this past time. I have I'm no a big problem. Deshaun Watson guy. I like Deshaun Watson. I think he's a good guy. I think he's a good character guy, great and whatnot. But I just, I think if you're going with the skill and the play, I mean, yeah, I get that. I think Dalvin Cook, uh, running back, I like that. I do like Travis Etienne at running back. Uh, Rashad Green is a wide receiver. I never think gets enough credit for what he did in Tallahassee, both during the the twenty that twenty nine game winning streak, but also his time before. He was somebody who came in, worked hard, you know, wasn't able to really do it in the NFL, but I will give him credit. He was arguably the one of the best wide receivers in FSU history. So I like that he got on Western Hills. Jameis, 40 touchdowns, 10 picks during the national championship season, but only 25 and 18 the next year. Mm -hmm. I'll say I'll go with the guy who was 29 and was 29 and one. Yeah. The two year span. Um, the 2013 team broke every record, right? Basically, on oh, offense, so a good amount of them. Right. Um, and again, it's not uh, it's unfortunate because Deshaun Watson was really, really good. Uh, we went over his stats on my radio show, The Sports Den. Um, I believe yes, just yes. No, last week we were talking about him. But I just have to be I have to go with Jameis, um, especially just from the way he started his career where literally he not one pass, not one ball he threw hit the ground. They were all caught. One shouldn't have been an incompletion. Um, but mm -hmm. the two incompletions that he threw were passes that were caught. Um, so I'll go with that part. Um, Travis Etienne definitely needs to be is – Travis Etienne and Dalvin Cook are two of the best running backs that I've ever seen play in ACC. Um, Travis Etienne, everybody talks about Trevor Lawrence, but really Travis Etienne is clearly the best player on that team. Um, I, I think anybody who says Trevor Lawrence, is, is that's lazy reporting. And – and if they if they were to lose Travis Etienne, I believe they would have a harder time winning games. Um, that's just my my opinion on that. Um, Rashard Green, okay, um, but definitely Sam. You, you said Sammy Watkins was one of the guys. Sammy yes. Watkins, well, and then Jameson Crowder's on both of them, their list. I, I... Um, I'm trying to think of another wide receiver that in the ACC that just mm. just stood out to me during that time. Martavis Bryant. Okay. Uh, you know, Justin Ross had a nice two years. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, no. yeah, I, 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 like those, I like those guys. I, I, um, I was just, I, I like, I mean, I don't have any beat. The only problem, I guess, even if somebody would have really just fight me and say, like, you know, Deshaun Watson, I, I get you could have an argument for it, but what Jameis did – actually, and I'm going to tell you why I like Jameis more, too. Both the fact that he was a seminar. The fact that he did it with the news literally parked in his – at his dorm room at week in and week out. Like, there was no distraction that was big enough to take him from – what it was on the field. And those guys were rock stars in Tallahassee. Not saying that they weren't in Clemson. I'm just saying, like, when you really look at how – I don't want to get Mark in trouble, but um, how ESPN was literally going after his head every week, um, it just seems like, whereas Deshaun – I I don't know anybody who didn't like Deshaun besides um, some draft scouts that didn't believe he should have been a top ten pick. I think I'm a big Deshaun Watson guy. Those two championship games he played against Alabama in 15 and 16, he had over 500 yards of total offense or, or within range of 500 yards total offense in the loss, put up 40 points against that Alabama defense. Then the next year, he's down 14 zip. He's getting thrown around like, like a rag doll in the first quarter. Comes back from 14 down, leads two fourth quarter drives, of course, including the, the, the last one uh, to pull that one out. I guess I just feel like there was never a game Jameis started where you thought Florida State, uh, and I'll say this, including the Rose Bowl against Oregon, there was never a game when Jameis Winston started that I thought Florida State was going to lose. I thought Florida State was going to win every single game because of him. 
Deshaun Watson, I didn't feel that way. And I saw him play against Florida State in 2015, against Florida State in 2016. That was a 2016 game. Florida State should have won that game. But we can talk about that from decades to come. Deshaun Watson is a great quarterback and obviously has had a, a much better pro career so far than what Jameis has had. But if just if we're going by his time in the ACC, I think Jameis just edges out Deshaun Watson. Don't get me wrong. I would take Deshaun Watson any day, but I'm going to take Jameis first. Sure. Mm-hmm. They're both great. Right. Can't go wrong with either one. Now, think- Davis and Crowder. Go ahead. Go ahead, Logan. I was going to say, I don't know if we're going to get to it, but also um, skill-wise, too, before we move on, Eric Ebron is over – Nick O'Leary here, and I think that's atrocious. I think maybe that someone's thinking about the NFL, maybe. Um, but I'm looking at stats here. Um, receiving wise, they're about identical. Eric Ebron has just a hundred and twenty more yards than um, or a little bit over Nick O'Leary, but Nick O'Leary had more uh touchdowns, um, had just had better stats. Uh, overall, I'm looking at <clears throat> scrimmage-wise touchdowns. Eric, Eric Ebron eight, Nick O'Leary eighteen. I don't know where. I don't know if they kind of forgot looking at the stats or if that even made sense. And also, Nick O'Leary won a national championship. I don't think Eric Ebron won a national championship. I guess they kind of forgot that Nick O'Leary wasn't here or ever played in college football. But Nick O'Leary was absolutely. Yeah, absolutely unstoppable in college football. Um, Nick, that's Nick why I was scared. Nick O'Leary had a great grandfather in, in Jack Nicholas. I don't know if you yeah. know that's his grandfather. Maybe that's what they were thinking of. They were distracted by the grandfather type of thing. They weren't thinking about Nick O'Leary, but it was not even fair. And no gloves. No gloves. Nick O'Leary just said, uh, uh, just hand in the dirt kind of guy and, and, and was just now. And also, Ran over Travis Blanks. Uh, go NFC. We also beat your ass um, in high school. That was easy too. So um, <laughs> they used to be good, but that's so Jamison Crowder is a pretty good player for the Redskins right now. This is what he did at Duke. His final three seasons: seventy-six catches, a thousand yards, eight touchdowns; a hundred and eight catches, thirteen hundred yards, eight touchdowns. That's the year that Duke played Florida State in the ACC championship game. So Duke never gets to an ACC championship game. So he he was at least part of that. And then as a senior, 85 catches, 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. That's a lot of catches. 76, 108, 85, 1,000, 1,300, 1,100 yards in those three seasons. So he put up numbers. Who are the Miami Titans during that time? Was that I just those guys are always good. That is a great question. That's actually a damn good question. <laughs> it's a good question. Oh my goodness. I'd like to apologize to my, the staff at the University of Miami and everyone. I, I completely forgot. Who are they? I, so, they, I mean, they're not good at a lot of things and they brag about a lot of stuff, but I will well, give them props. They you. are tight in you. Right. Even though they haven't had a good one since Greg Olson, you know, a decade and a half ago, but. Oh, that's a good point. Bubba Franks was two decades ago. Yeah. Kellen sure. Winslow in jail. Kellen Winslow. What is it about good tight ends and going to jail? I don't know. You're Mr. I love tight ends. By the way, George, God bless you as well. I appreciate that. Even though you're a gay I know. I flipped on uh, Aaron Hernandez's game against uh, Alabama in the SEC championship game the other night and thought, wow, look at this dude tearing up the tide and – He's history. Yeah. Anyway, biggest mistake was him going back to New England. If he'd gone anywhere else, I think he would have been fine. But going back near his home, that's what I So got him. Uh, you guys have any thoughts about the offensive line, which includes uh, Cam Irving, Florida State, Anthony Costanzo, Boston College, Garrett Bradbury from North Carolina State, UNC's Jonathan Cooper, and Florida State's Trey Jackson. Oh, so Mark Packer um, has two Knowles. West Durham, Peyton on the Knowles offensive line. But, I mean. When was Rodney Hudson at? When was Rodney at Florida State? Rodney Hudson graduated in 2000, I believe. I think he was on the 2000? Really? Yeah, he's been at he's been out for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean 2010? 2000? 2010. Yeah, yeah. I was say, he wasn't before me. I August 2010. Uh, but, really, offensive line, let's be honest, and we've, we've said this before, weeks after weeks after weeks after weeks, that offensive line has been atrocious for at least the last half decade. So at, after that 20, probably halfway through the 2015 season, that offensive line has been nothing to brag about. So the fact that there are even two guys in that, on that list is surprising to me. 
Mike Williams would have to be on a second team going back to the wide receivers. Yeah. All right, defensive line. Got Bradley Chubb, NC State, top five pick in the NFL draft to the Broncos, of course. Shaq Respect. Lawson, Clemson. Respect. Kristen Wilkins, Clemson. Marvin Wilson, Florida State. They threw in Dexter Lawrence from uh, Clemson. Man, they got a lot of defensive tackles. Hang on. Wow, they've got uh, a six-man line. Let's start over. You got Chubb from NC State, Lawson from Clemson, Wilkins from Clemson, Marvin Wilson, Florida State. Dexter Lawrence, Clemson, hits Aaron Donald, who obviously is a great pro. To, to me, no love for – I'm going to say it. There's two names on there that, that that didn't make that list, Demarcus Walker and Brian Burns. The fact that neither one of them made the list, that's a little bit, a little bit surprising. Oh, oh no, no, that's the surprising one? Uh, Timmy, Timmy Jernigan, Jernigan has the yeah. most violent film I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like, Marvin's got to come off. Marlon's got to yeah. come off the list. Yeah, D. Walk. If you know me, there's not a kid I love more than Demarcus Walker. He's like he's actually like a little brother to me. Um, he is a guy who worked really, really hard, and he's like on the top sack sack leaders in FSU history. But when I when I listen to some of these other guys, these are guys that I might fear a little bit more. Um, Shaq, I get so. I mean, I, I, I can respect Shaq. It's, I can respect Shaq. I can respect Chubb. I can't. I, I outside of that, man. Like I, I just really don't. I don't understand. Like what? The, what the? What the? Was it just like we're looking at stri strictly stats, or are we looking at um, violence and havoc that was caused? Because especially in the interior, the, the line, like there's things that are bigger than just getting the stats. Hell, Timmy Jernigan played on a defense where literally everybody, the, the top two. T the two deep went to the NFL, so like ain't very many stats you didn't on, on a roster that 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 good. Do either one of you get the ACC network? Because I don't get it. So <laughs> yeah, I get it. I, I, I ditched I ditched um cable. I cut my dish. So I have YouTube TV. I mean, I got. Free but I don't watch it unless games come on. I mean, Comcast owns us with NBC, so I like we get the free Comcast. But Matt, I, I, I'm I'm right there with Jane. Like. That, I mean, it shocked me seeing. I mean, I, this is no shot. Of, I feel like I'm just taking shots at Marvin Wilson all night, but that is not the case. We're still cool. We're still good. But Marvin Wilson shouldn't be on there yet. I mean, unless he has a gigantic season again or, like, it just has a, a nice steady season. I think it's just because there's a lot of talk uh, about Marvin Wilson. I don't know. I think there's just too much maybe NFL talk or whatnot. Timmy Jernigan's still a talented defensive lineman in the NFL. He's going to go go to a team soon in the next couple of weeks, um, and he was absolutely disgusting. That's my number one favorite player ever in FSU history. Uh, Loco coach, I wore number eight in high school uh, because of Timmy Jernigan. Uh, he was just nasty. He just liked hitting people, not just hitting them, but just kind of just treating offensive linemen like just little rag dolls, and he'd probably tell you, a nice few things too when you're on the ground. Also, he I remember watching a video. Um, just, just hitting Florida players for no reason, and that's just something fun that should always happen, and it just creates the rivalry, makes makes the rivalry better. It's, that's how, that's how it should be. Um, and he won a national championship, uh, so I, I don't know what else. And he also played in that national championship across the country with the flu. He had a fever of some sort, um, and he was absolutely gassed, but he was still going out there. I remember. Uh, Herb Street, I mean, he loved every one of them. He loved Telvin Smith and and. Um, LaMarcus Joyner, but uh, I think they had a couple of shots of Timmy Jernigan just absolutely gassed out of his mind, sweating and dying, but he was still going out there. Uh, he didn't really talk about it as much, but Jimbo stated it after the game. Um, and a lot of players really got gave a lot of respect to him, but he manhandled people. He even ran side to side. I remember him laying out that kid. I don't know if it was the Nevada game or the Maryland game. Um, just absolutely just clocking the kid. Um, and it was just nasty. So I don't think Marvin will. I think Timmy Jernigan should be replaced with Marvin Wilson here, without a doubt. Neither one of you gives any love to Brian Burns. I take Demarcus Walker over Brian Burns. So one, two, three. Timmy Walker Burns. Unacceptable. Demarcus was talking about it on the podcast too, and he was like, "I don't want to be cocky. I don't want to have the big ego and whatnot." But um, 
he was just talking about, you know, if he if he would have stayed, I think he really liked Lonning. Um, if he would have just had Lonning throughout his career, he feels like he would have snapped every record. I can agree with that. He had to learn how to get out of his stance first, you know, be more explosive. But um, <laughs> like that was something that I was one of his weaknesses. I used to pick on him all the time about it. He worked really, really hard on it. Um, Brian Burns was a product of having somebody on the other side of him. I'll give DeMarcus the props on this, is that DeMarcus yeah. had to get it out the mud. That's why I like him. It's no knock on Brian. I think Brian Burns is going to is he's going to continue to excel where he's at right now in the NFL. But um yeah, this D line and, and Christian Wilkins, um that thing that he does to um, guys when they're on their stomach. Mm, yeah, that should I remove you. I can't I can't give him I can't give him all I mean, listen. Whatever you like is what you like. Uh, however, however you are is how you are. I have uh, no judgment to that. But uh, just if other people aren't that way and you're fo- forcing yourself on them, you can go to jail for that. I'm just that, those are my that those are my thoughts. I, I can get sorry. if I ever saw Timmy Journey and doing I just, I'm sorry. I just would never I would I, would, I wouldn't respect Timmy Journey. Uh, I, I would you know, I, I would you guys have a bias against Brian Burns because he's from South Florida. I get it. You guys are both North Florida guys. You have a bias against us from South Florida. It's cool. <laughs> I understand it. I get it. I still love you both. You're training to work on TV. I now. think he's going to be a cat in the NFL, but if I'm looking back at like last year, I, I, Walker should have had another should have had another national championship. He came in as a true freshman. He actually had quite a bit of playing time his freshman year, but he should have had another national championship. So – Walker would have had one. Um, Burns, I don't know. I mean, like you said, Jimbo was starting to, you know, really bounce out of here, and you know, uh, you know. <laughs> Deshaun Watson also ran for eleven hundred yards one year. Jesus Christ, you're still on Deshaun Watson over yeah. here. Yeah, no. threw for four thousand and ran for a <laughs> thousand. All three of us said he's a good quarterback. You don't have to. We're, he's an all-time uh, great. I'm a big Deshaun Watson guy. I'm just a big Deshaun Watson guy. When he, he was doing Syracuse, all that, right? I believe he lost. It was a loss to Syracuse. He lost. He lost to Pitt in Alabama. Those are his two losses. Um, Kelly Bryant lost to Syracuse. Okay, so he lost to Pitt. It wasn't Aaron Donald's Pitt, though, right? Uh, yeah. That was in 2015, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. James Conner. Yeah, crew. he lost. To, he lost. To Forty-three, forty-two. So, like, I'm gonna go with his losses. He lost the pit. He lost the pit. Great. Put up 42 points. Alabama. Put up 42 points in that game. James was so good. James is. James is. Let me tell you people how great James was. Even his his redshirt sophomore year. I think he was just a giving person, and the problem is he's still a giving person in the NFL. He feels bad that he's that he's so talented. That he has to even even the playing field. The other team so much is that when we saw what he did for Louisville, he literally spotted Louisville twenty one points, and it came back by himself basically, oh. and and won that in the second half. What the bad ankle? That's, that's what, this just how good he is, man. It's it's um it's kind of one of those things, man. But who are the linebackers in the DBs? I'm curious on this song. ACC. Yeah, here we go, here we go. So we got uh, back seven on defense. Don't take that angle, James. Linebackers. Uh, linebackers, Luke Keekley, BC, Isaiah Simmons, Clemson, Micah Kaiser, Virginia. No trouble. Well, Keekley's a tackling machine. He's just. I, uh, know I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Dontavis Jackson, hello. <laughs> Simmons, uh, Kaiser, to Kalen Brooks is getting missed out on here. Emmett Wrights for the uh, Lori Robinson honorary pick down there. No, I got to Kalen Brooks. He's he's not talked about enough. Okay. They're, they're, they're screwing and him over. And then the secondary guys, I believe Lamar. Right. Okay, this makes no sense. The secondary guys, there's one corner. Well, so I think so. I think one guy had like six linemen and only three secondary players, but it looks yeah. like Packer had both Derwin but, and Jalen. I'm and, looking at Packers. Yeah. He's got two looks, safeties in a corner. He's got one corner. 
There's two corners. Uh, he's there's got two, two corners on there, but Lamarcus oh. didn't really play that off. corner. Yeah, it might cut Who's off. The right, corner. I got Jalen Ramsey. He's got, a, yeah. Mark Packer has Derwin, Jalen Ramsey, and Lamarcus, and then Wester has just. If I look real quick, he has no, he has just Jalen. So Jalen made them both. Yeah, really. Should I mean, Lamarcus didn't really play. I mean, for a little bit, but he kind of moved to that hybrid. Okay. What do you call it now? Nickel or. So, so here's my question: As we're we'll venturing the overtime phase here, now that we're over an hour with Mark Rogers TV, the West College Football, I'm going to ask all three of you: If you could only have one, you're starting an NFL team. You can only have one of them. Who do you take? Jalen Ramsey or Derwin James? College? No, your NFL thing. You're starting right now. Oh, NFL. Oh, who are you taking? Taking Derwin. Taking Derwin. Why? Yeah, yeah, right so now. So you can do more with Derwin James. I can do more. Yep. Do more and just just freak talent. I mean, Jalen Ramsey, I think, is physically really gifted. I think Derwin James is physically gifted, but mm -hmm. also is just straight up more talented. I um, heard the offensive. Is versatile. I work out for their life whenever German. Like, you watch him play, he plays like an absolute freak. Yeah, NFL offensive coaches have talked about Derwin, too, and he, just after his first year, and they said they had to prepare for, you know, Derwin James and packages that he'd come into, and that's when – that's you know you're going to be a problem for the next five, ten years. Um, he's going to have a good career in the NFL, so you must certainly have good Derwin. But I got to hop off of here because we have an yeah. uh, interview at 8.30. Um but yeah, I think this was good stuff. Logan, where can people find you? Uh, just at the Noel Game Day on Twitter. You can find us on Insta Instagram too. Uh, the podcast is here. The Spear. Um, we have uh, Patrick Williams on tonight, basketball wise, a future lottery, hopefully potential NBA lottery pick, and then also uh, gr uh, the latest FSU commit, Kobe uh, Gross. I got to ask him if it's Gross or Gross. I I, I don't know. I might be screwing this up, but that's a, probably going to be my first question to ask. James, <laughs> what you got? Um, at Big Game James underscore thirty six on Twitter is um, the easiest follow. Um, at Fifth Quarter Inc. Um, the Fifth Quarter Network of college football is growing. Um, FSU um, is probably our largest platform right now, but um, we cover all of college football um, and NFL and. Now, because of me, NASCAR. I'm a huge NASCAR fan all of a sudden. I love it. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 I can't wait to throw a big tailgate at Daytona in February if the COVID doesn't kill us. But, yeah, um, but that's basically it. Um, you know, I've got a couple podcasts, Sports Den. Sports Den Live is my main radio show, so love, um, would love for you guys to go listen to that for, if you're in the Jacksonville area. See, see, the two men are talking after on here are the Jew and the African American. That's that is, this is what 2020 should be right here. This James, James, I'll see you in Daytona. I'll go every year, and I don't know if I'd be able to give you a straight sentence into like 10 laps of the race, but uh, the tailgating, I promise you, I will be pretty straightforward with. I will be fine, but uh, it's fun, it's I'm, amazing. I'm going for the gear, the women. The alcohol and the food. <laughs> well, the women is an interesting. And Bubba Wallace. Point. And Bubba Wallace. I will have Bubba <laughs> Wallace MFTK gear. I don't. I know he sucks. You don't have to tell me. And I and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm only rooting for him because he's black. Heck <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah! All right, I got to bounce. Thank you, Mark. As always, Thanks, congratulations Logan. again. Twenty K, baby. That. We're sitting on twenty thousand seven. See you, Logan. Thanks, yes. man. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Jason. You guys. Mr. James, Perfect. I sent you a direct message. I got to send you a follow up, though. So look out for that. What happened? Jason, here we are. This is, so, like, this is like show number seven, number eight, number 12. Yeah. They're, they're, they're sprinkled out there. They're sprinkled in there. So we talked uh, this on Twitter. I have to ask you, though. I, sure. I have to ask you a full question first. In full yeah. disclosure, you are an Ohio State fan, but you are an alumni of the the fighting golden flashes. I am. I went to one game while I was there. I did go to one game. So can you please justify other than money to help finance your school? Why in the hell are you guys have a schedule that includes road games at Penn state at Kentucky and at Alabama? 
who the hell thought that was a good idea? Well, I'm first going to specify that the one game I went to Kent State was I was still in orientation. We hadn't even gone to class yet, and they played a, a late August game at home. And everybody, of course, boom, we're, we're new students, got to go out to the game, check out the game. And being the college football guy that I am, nobody else was playing yet. So I wasn't missing any of the big games. So I went to the one game, they kick a last second field goal. That was with Glenn Mason on the sideline, the then Minnesota head coach later. He went from Kent State to Kansas, then to Minnesota, but he was the head coach there. And uh, they went seven and four, which was like unthinkable at the time, because I believe they won two games my remaining three years there. Who did they beat in that game? Who did they beat in that game? Do you remember? Who did they beat? Those two out of... You know who did Kent State beat in that game? Your one game I believe it was Toledo. They beat Toledo. The Fighting Rockets. Got it. Okay. Yes, they beat the Rockets. But uh, yeah, it's, it's quite the um, murderer's row of Kentucky, Alabama, and Penn State. But if you look at a lot of the MAC teams, they play very difficult non-conference schedules. They do. I went through the entire schedules this weekend, and you can see it before – the first weekend of the season, we will give you all the predictions. I have predicted every college football game, and I will tell you who is making the playoff. And guess what? We've got controversy. Okay. Well, six maybe teams. if Tennessee's going to make it, we will have controversy. Yeah. Six teams, four spots. Who makes it? Who gets left out? So where are we going to be able to find your game-by-game -game predictions? Well, right here at a notebook in my house in Pembroke Pines, but you can find it. Just come starting in August. We'll have it on NBCMiami.com. We'll have all your predictions. Uh, we'll preview how Florida State's going to look. We'll also preview Miami and Florida because I'm contractually obligated to cover the other state schools around here. Um, I also realized that I need to lose more weight. I've lost about 85 pounds, but I need to lose more because there is literally a football game to cover every single weekend. And as you know, Mark, with the free food in the – the press box, that could be a problem. So here's my question for you. This might be the most important question for some of the night. Uh, I've got a friend who lost somewhere in the 110 to 15 right. range. So you lost 85 pounds. So that's, yeah. uh, I know, all joking aside, that is an amazing accomplishment. I, I can't imagine that kind of discipline and willpower to get that done. How did you do it? Divorce. Okay. That's basically what happened. I got divorced and stopped eating like a like a large human being. Okay. Well, you, out, yes. they, 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 I was going more for the eating portion of it being explained than the first portion. Number, number one, salads. Salads are your friend. And no, the lettuce and tomato on your bacon cheeseburger is not kind of as a salad. Number two, it's simple. Just go out and walk at least a half an hour a day. Go out and get a little walk in. We have a mall around here and my complex around here. When I used to work at the station, now we're all working from home. Come back to the gym over here. Walk for a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour. It's really, it's it's not that hard. You just watch it. Watch your calorie intake. There and it is. Forced. That's amazing. See, see, my story is, and I, and I hope you and other people understand when I say this, because we all have our, our strengths and weaknesses in life, things that we're born genetically capable of doing and not capable of doing. So one thing I have been able to do is like pretty much eat whatever I want, not gain any weight. So my, my eat like right now, I, I ate three bowls of ice cream yesterday and Entenmann's chocolate dip donuts. And that's how I eat, but this isn't good. So I don't gain any weight and I feel great, but I just keep telling myself it's going to catch up with me. So I go on eating. Um, I, I try to focus. And and so so right now, what I'm trying to do to eliminate the bad food is done exactly what you've said. I'm trying to implement one salad per day, uh, a handful of almonds, and it's plenty of water. Yes. I'm starting with those three. How much this glass of water is going to fill you up so that you don't need snacks and you don't need stuff like that. Water, it helps. Yeah. This has been the motivational part of the overtime section here, sponsored by I, I truly am fascinated and think that's that's amazing. That that is uh, that's tremendous. It also helps not being in college anymore where you have this place in Tallahassee and anyone who's gone there, it's called Bullwinkles, where on Friday nights it was ten dollars all you could drink from five PM to one AM. You it also food. helps to be able to cook. I can't cook. I can cook. So that was one thing I was talking that's about. That's what I should learn to do. 
And, and then my kids come over on their days off and I'm taking them to go get wings or five guys last night. And the five guys is good. Not gonna lie. It is good. Five, five guys. Five five guys. Yeah. Yeah. Add bacon and grilled onions to it. Add that on Sunday. What also is good, according to you, is Popeye's. Popeye's is delicious. Popeye's, sponsor us, please. Sponsor us for the 2020 season. Folks out there, if you've got any connections to possible sponsorships, I would love to compensate uh, Jason, Logan, and James. It, it's only fitting that they get comp compensated. I would take my little cut. But most importantly, they provide most of the analysis to compensate them. Listen, if Popeye's just wants to give me a two-piece you know, with some dirty rice, that's all I need. You don't have to pay me cash. Just hook us up with dinner. That's fine. We're not greedy here. James asked me for some uh, analytics and some some numbers to back up that uh, he would go out and and hopefully drum up some some business for us. George says, "God bless Kent State." I, mean, I don't know why, but all right, God bless Kent State. Apparently, how many famous Kent State alum can you name, Jason? Julian Edelman, Jack Lambert, because you said them both earlier a couple of weeks ago when you were talking about Kent State, and that's about it. Well, it's, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good considering the just it's been a wasteland for football success there. Just a wasteland. They won their first bowl game just last this past season. Um, so we're tacking on uh, to Jack Lambert and Julian Edelman, James Harrison. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, Nick Saban and Lou Holtz. We have Josh Cribbs, who's one of the great uh, return men in the history of uh, the NFL. Now, here's my question. I'm going to put you on the spot real quick before we go. Because here's what, first of all, Mike Williams, thank you. For that. Right Mike, there. thank you so much. We appreciate that. We appreciate it, buddy. So, and I'm going to rib on Mike Williams' Canes here real quick in a, in a kind of a back needed way. A lot of Canes fans went to FIU, went to other schools, but still root for Miami. You are an Ohio State guy, but a Kent State grad. If Kent State plays Ohio State, who are you rooting for? Oh, it's not even close, Ohio State. I don't even consider it. Okay, I grew up an Ohio State fan. I went to school at Kent State for four years. I then left the school and continued to be an Ohioan and any true Ohioan roots for the Ohio State University. But do you root for Kent State when they play anyone else? I don't even know who they're playing yeah. week to week. So what we were I knew their bowl game was because I know everybody's bowl game. But other than that, I had no idea. So programming alert, every single week during the college football season, we will have Porsche Mark programming where we give you your Kent State football update just to make Mark Rogers talk about his alma mater, the Fighting Golden Flags. We could do that. We could also do – I also like to look at the entirety of the TV schedule and kind of map it out, and I'll do a, do a uh, call-in show, and I'll just talk about kind of my first selection at noon. Then if that turns out to be a dog, I'll go to this game and just kind of map it out from there. We used to do that on Chop Chat a lot. It was our TV picks of the week. Yeah, we do that all the time. Anything on NBC, that's my programming, but, you know, we'll just go with that. Anything not on ESPN. Okay, let's be careful. I'm just, I'm, I just, I'm just throwing out that. Apex Fox. to continue. Fox Sports 1, ACC Network, for the 12 people that get it. I don't get the ACC Network. I, I don't. I have to go watch Nor it. Or do I. Whenever FSU plays, I have to go watch it somewhere. Stay Nor do I. And that's going to be a pretty good haul from where you live up to Tallahassee. I got to think it's what, eight hours? Uh, it's 400 miles. I can make it there if I stay okay. about six and a half hours. Okay. It's, I mean, it's straight turnpike to 75 to 10. So it's not that bad. But it all depends on how many cops are out there. If you can go a little faster than the 70 mile an hour speed limit. Not that I ever do that. I'm a law abiding citizen in the state of Florida. That was a big if in there. If you would, if you chose. Right. Okay, we follow rules here in South Florida. All right. Hypothetically. We are sure. a law abiding community down here. Well, folks, we thank you for the 20,000. We thank you for joining us for 59 shows here, as Jason has almost joined us for 59 shows. And, um, of course, uh, if you got a sponsor idea for us, let us know that. But this has been the after show. As coined by Jason. In my, as I continue my perfect streak of being on every show I've been invited on. We we can make that consideration. So, so sure. You, you can't help it. If Cal Ripken had, had uh, one of the Orioles managers not put him in the lineup one day, it would not have been his fault. 
but I don't think Earl Weaver ever tried to screw him over like like that. That's like let's let's play two today. Cal just went. He just hit the bus. Let's let's play two. Guys, don't tell Cal. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get this one in today. Don't worry about it. Hey. It was one of those things. So so what happened? You know what happened with the Norvell story. It broke like late, late that night, like 2 a.m. in the morning, something like that. Logan's all over it. I have no idea this is going on. I'm at work. I wake up. I've got a text from uh, Logan that basically says, man, we should jump on this. And I'm like, I don't even know what he's talking about. But hey, yeah, let's breaking news. Let's jump on here. You've got my number. You've got my Twitter. You could have sent me something. But so I am, I am standing by this. I am perfect here. I'm standing by that. It's understood. You it's can't understood. take this from I will me. Say that. You can't take this moment from me, Mark Rogers. I, 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 I do that uh, with a little wink at my eye and a little uh, tongue in the cheek when I like to throw out the 58 for 59. So next week, 59 and 59 next week on Mark Rogers TV. What's the, the joke is over. We'll get back to the perfect score and – and, and rank him as he is deserved to be ranked. All right, Jason. Thank you. It, it wouldn't be a show without you. Have a good one. See you next week. All right, everybody else. We'll see you later.